integrating DocuSign with Monday.com. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all of the steps involved in integrating DocuSign with Monday so you can send out contracts by a click of a button from Monday.com and then when those contracts are signed, they come straight back over to the Monday.com system and go through the next step of the process. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through all of that. Really, really helpful. I can guarantee it's gonna save you and your sales team an enormous amount of time or whatever other area of the business you're using it for, whether it be account management, onboarding, or anything else. By the way, if you need any help automating, integrating, streamlining your business with monday.com or any other applications, business applications, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. So as you can see here, I am in an example monday.com system. Um, and there's a few different things that we're going to need to go over in this video. But I'm going to try and keep this as straightforward as humanly possible, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go to the board that we are wanting to integrate DocuSign with. So obviously you need a board and then triggers within a board. So let's say status being changed or something along those lines. We need to have that in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new board as an example. So new board, uh, DocuSign uh, integration example. Okay, just for the sake of this video, just to keep things really, really simple. So this is step one. We need to go to a board that's going to work for us. Step two, there are two things we need to create. We need to create a text column. It's a text column called DocuSign ID. So this allows us to track the envelope. And this is all going to be fancy words. It doesn't mean much. It's just a unique reference for the DocuSign that's been sent. And then we also need a status column. So I would say DocuSign status so the text column is absolutely fine there are a couple of changes i'm going to need you to make to the docusign status so i'm going to need sent as a, as an option and i'm also going to need signed as an option and what i would probably do actually is just use the green done and just change that to signed and then i might change the scent to purple because i quite like these dark purple colors there we go um and then i'm just going to delete the other options so excuse me so this is step one. Congratulations. If you've just done this, you're kind of already there. <laughs> I'm joking. We're getting there though, right? Uh, so DocuSign status is done, sent and signed. DocuSign ID is there. The other thing that we're going to need is contact information relating to the person that you would like to send the DocuSign to. Okay. Typically with DocuSign, you're going to need an email address and a name. So I'm just going to add those as options. So I'm going to create a text and I'm just going to call this full client as an exam, client full name. Now, you can have this displayed however you want. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm just going to add an email address. I'm just going to add an email column to the right, uh, email. Uh, I'm just going to say client email. So now I've got a name to address the contract to, and I've got an email to send the contract to. Um, and that's pretty much it. So these are the, th the four things that we need. I'm just going to delete all of this excess just to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and there we go. Cool. Um, that's pretty much it. Client full name, client email. So what I'll do is I'll put this in. Um, what I'll actually do is add, I'm going to delete these three, three, four, five. There we go. Job done. Deleted. And then Nick Boardman as the name, uh, just as an example, client full name. In all fairness, if you've got it set up like that, you could literally use the item name as the name. There's no reason why you couldn't. Um, I obviously just wasn't thinking, just going to put my email in as well. And then I'm going to leave these. You could even lock these. So go to restrict column editing because you don't really want anyone messing with this stuff. This is strictly for the automation. OK, so that's step one. Step two is we're going to need Zapier. Now, if you've not used Zapier, if you've never heard of it before, it is the Swiss army knife of businesses. It's the best software on the planet, hands down, by a mile. Um, if you're not familiar with it, check out the link above. I've put together a full tutorial on how to use it, why it's good for service-based businesses, but businesses in general. Um, and then if you've not got it and you want to sign up, please use the link below. It's not an affiliate. It's just a link. I would promote it uh till the day i die it's that good so you need to log on log in log on to sign in to zapier and as you can see i've got my zapier account here now i've got a number of different folders please ignore all of this you can literally just go to zaps you can go to your zaps up the top here so my zaps as you can see there aren't any or you can create a folder so i'm just going to go to system demo just as an example you can see i've got some stuff already here so all I'm going to do is go to create in the top right hand corner and I'm going to create a new zap. OK, so press create and I'm going to hit new zap. Now we need to create what's called triggers and actions. Very, very simple. So if we go back to our DocuSign integration example, we need to think of a trigger. 
So maybe I'll add a status column, status, and then I'm just going to add this here. I'm going to hide column summary, and then I'm just going to delete all of these just for simplicity's sake. Um, maybe I should have added this as a step before, and I'm just going to change this to accepted. So what I want to do is I want to say when status exactly matches accepted, and let's assume this is a client or a quote or something like that, then we're going to send the contract to a client. Okay, so trigger is monday.com so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get select trigger and we're going to search monday.com okay now if you do not have your account connected it's going to ask you to connect your account okay so i've got my loads, I've got loads of monday.com accounts so i've got mine connected if yours is not connected it's going to come up with a pop-up and it's going to ask you for an api key please <laughs> do not panic okay all you need to do to get your API key is go to monday.com, go to your initials in the top right hand corner, go to administration and then go to connections on the left hand side and then go to API. And if you don't have an API token, just press generate. Um, and then all you need to do is press copy and just paste it into the pop up. That's it. Your job is then done. It's not complicated in the slightest. OK, um, it may it they. I think developers want want the stuff like this to seem complicated. It's really not that hard. Um, and then go back to Zapier and connect your account. Job done. And then we need to trigger event. We need to create a trigger event. So when something happens. So trigger event, I'm going to go when specific column value changed in board. There you can see. So when specific column value changed in board. And that is our trigger. Because we said that our trigger was going to be when the status changes. So this is a specific column value. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and press continue. And then I'm going to select the board. And it's going to be the DocuSign integration example. If this doesn't populate, just search for the board. This is now going to pull all of the boards from your whole Monday.com system into here. Um, and I'm going to select the board. And then I'm going to choose the column ID. So which column is it that is triggering like or acting as our trigger so in this instance it's just status but you can literally see all of our columns from the monday.com board being pulled in through here so i've got status okay so status is our trigger then i'm going to hit continue um, and then i'm going to test my trigger to see if there's any data pulling through hopefully my record as you can see, all of this information is pulling through. Again, this is going to seem really complicated. It's not that hard. You can see the emails there. You can see the name is there. That's pretty much all we need in order to make this work. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, continue with selected record. And then the next thing we want to do is create a filter. So we only want this to trigger when the status column, right, is equal to um, when the status column is equal to accepted. So. I actually cannot see the status option because I have not got any data in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new option in my status column called pending. Or actually, you know what? Let's just make this really easy. I'm just going to change the status to accepted. That's going to then allow me to re-trigger some data to be pulled through via Zapier via the test. So I'm going to hit find new records. It's going to give me changed event A. It's going to give me a number a B. And then we will be able to see status one accepted. Whereas as you can see on this one, the status one was completely blank because the data is blank. So if you're missing information, just add it and then go back to this on testing pro process for um, the specific column value change. And that data will then pull through. It's really clever. So then we're going to go status. So where's status? And we can just search for the value accepted. So where's status one? is exactly matches accepted there we go so now we can test our filter because we do if we've got multiple steps in this the process we do not want when they are on follow-up to trigger the docusign as an example but as you can see this is going to pass so now we just need to go ahead and connect or trigger our docusign so if i search docusign as our option again same principle applies you need to create an account if you don't have one already um, so go select, I've got a few DocuSign options as you can see, so I'm just going to use this one. And then when, and then if you need to sign in, just sign in. I think you need the standard version of DocuSign. It's like $240 a year. It's the very nominal fee. Um, and then go to action and then you've got create signature request, send envelope using documents, send envelope using template. Um, in this instance, we're going to use a template. So an envelope is essentially as it says on the tin, an envelope to, with a template that we've already added into DocuSign. I'm going to work on the assumption you have already got DocuSign 
set up or at least i hope you do because this is otherwise a pointless video <laughs> then i'm gonna just we just want to trigger the sending of a template to a client so there we go and i'm gonna go ahead and i've selected send envelope using template and i'm gonna hit continue and then i need to select my template id now i've got loads of templates in here employment contract monday.com services setup etc so i'm gonna use crm crew monday.com service agreement for monday.com setup don't need to worry about brand ID, don't need to worry about email subject, don't need to worry about email body because all of this has been set up inside of DocuSign. If you do want to make any changes, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then I have client email, client name, client phone, delivery method for client, um, contractor email, contractor name, contractor phone, um, which is all our information. And then I've got all of these text columns here. Now, these are all of the unique columns inside of your DocuSign. Now, I have not gone to the extensive length of changing the API name for each of the columns, but it's very easy to do so. Um, so this might be like first name or and then this might be client address and then this might be amount and then this might be recurring amount or this might be initial cost, recurring cost, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But we only need to populate some information. So realistically, we only actually need client email and client name in order to make this work. So if I go ahead and select press the plus button on the right hand side, we're going to take the information from the monday.com board and then put it here all completely automatically. So this is the net of the email. So I'm just going to search Nick at CRM crew and you can see we've got email one email and that's the one you want to go ahead and select. Okay email one email and then we got client name so that was the name i wrote in so we've got nick boardman and then obviously the post name was the item name and then text 11 is the actual text column that i created so either one would work but for the consistency of this video i'm just going to select text 11 don't need phone number i'm going to select delivery method for the client as being email I'm not going to worry about any of this information. Contractor email is obviously going to be sent from me, so I don't need to worry about that. Name is going to be sent from me, etc., etc. All I'm going to do now is just press continue. I'm going to hit test step. There's nothing else that's required in order to send this. So hopefully this will load and either give me an error message or, as you can see, it's been successful. So you can see that data in it's taken all of this information and then data out it's sent the envelope. You've got an envelope ID, a URL, uh, a timestamp as well. So now we want to push this information back into monday.com, okay? The reason being is we need that envelope ID and we need to update the status of the, um, the DocuSign status within monday.com. So we've sent the template and then we need to update or actually it's change multiple column values inside of monday.com. Then press continue. Then we obviously want to go for our DocuSign integration board. The item ID can actually be pulled from the specific column value changed up here. So if we go to the three dotted button on the right hand side, change this from static to custom, then hit plus, and then we're looking for the item ID option on the specific column value changed in board. Um, hit item ID, and then this is going to automatically find that item. And then we just need to go ahead and populate the envelope ID to the DocuSign ID, and we can just manually change the status to sent for the DocuSign status. So DocuSign status is now equal to sent. DocuSign ID is going to be send envelope ID is literally envelope ID. That's it. All we need to do now is press continue and then test step. Before I test step, I just want to show you something. DocuSign ID and DocuSign status completely blank here. All right. Now I'm going to hit press test step and magic is about to happen. So there's a DocuSign ID automatically pulled through. The DocuSign status automatically updated. Magic. That's it. Super simple. So now I can publish this app. So I am now automatically sending data from a trigger inside of monday.com to send a contract via DocuSign. So DocuSign can sent, um, well actually deal, let's just say quote accepted to DocuSign sent. That's essentially what the zap is, right? Um, and then what we need to do is another zap. Again, pretty straightforward. Um, and that's when the DocuSign is signed just to update monday.com to say that the DocuSign has been signed. So we go to create in the top right hand corner, new zap again. And then as opposed to the trigger being monday.com this time, the trigger is going to be DocuSign. So we search for DocuSign. Uh, and as you can see, we're triggering an event when envelope status updated, right? So when the envelope status is updated, we're going to select an account again. So that's going to be our account. And then we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Now we need to define the rules for the updated envelope or what, what the updated status is. So when it is completed, 
not signed, not voided, not declined. Like you can create variables for all of this if you want to. But I just want when the DocuSign has been completed. So when all parties have signed the contract, then that envelope is completed. So completed as certificate of completion. No, I don't care about that. Download form data you can do if you want to. Again, not going to go into that in this video. Hit continue. And then I'm going to very swiftly just go, go away. And I'm going to sign that contract that I just said. So. I've just gone ahead and I've signed the contract. So now I'm gonna pull that data through because I've just signed the contract. Give it a moment or two. Hopefully this is gonna pull through. It does tend to take some time. But I suspect it will be the top one as that's the most recent one that's been signed. And as you can see here, sent, send her email, Nick at CRM crew, send a username. Yes, that's all relevant information. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sender was recipient, sign a name, Nick Boardman, Nick at CRM crew.com. Um, that's perfect. That's literally it. Cool. So obviously we had to, I had to sign both ends of the contract, um, just to test this and get this in motion. But when it's live, then you're not, gonna ha not obviously not going to have to do that. So now the envelope has been signed or the DocuSign has been signed. Now we just need to update monday.com. So we search monday.com. Cool. And then all we're looking for as an action is get item by column value. So we need to find this column based on this DocuSign envelope ID. Okay. So select the account again. So monday.com. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. So I'm getting the DocuSign integration example column to search in being the DocuSign ID. There we go. And then I need to populate what data we're using to find that, which is obviously the envelope. So I'm just going to search envelope ID, which is this one here. Um, DocuSign ID to envelope ID. We need to find a match because if we've got like 50 different items on our monday.com board, we need to match the two. So obviously we've got the DocuSign ID connected, DocuSign ID. So all we need to do now is hit continue, test step. And what it's going to do is look for a match between the DocuSign ID and the unique ID on here, which as you can see is this one. Um, now I had some really weird thing happen with my DocuSign system. So I actually had to change the DocuSign ID. Um, it, this is just because like, us actively live using DocuSign at the time of doing this video, um, but you shouldn't run into any problems. So get item by column value. And then all we need to do is we need to go for another monday.com step. This is a final step in the process. And then we need to change, change multiple column values. So the DocuSign has been done. We've now found the item for the DocuSign that's been completed, and then we need to change the column value. So again, select the board, find the item ID. The item ID is going to be derived from this particular step in the process. So go to the three dotted button, go to custom, go to get item or go to uh, custom, press plus get item by column value and the select ID. And then all we need to do is just change the DocuSign status to sign. So it's sent at the moment, just hit signed, then press continue. Then we can test the step, go up here. And as you can see, this should now change to sign. That means we can then trigger the next step of the process, whether that be the invoice being raised automatically or something else magical happening. So now all I need to do, hit publish on the process or this this integration uh, or this app, if you will. Um, and then I'm just gonna change the name. So rename DocuSign completed and then update monday.com. Bang, job done. So now I would use this as the next step in the trigger. So DocuSign status being completed, then I would have another trigger that says when DocuSign status is equal to completed or when DocuSign status equal to signed, then create invoice in zero and send invoice to client. And then we'd have an invoice ID, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I know this has been very long winded. Hopefully this all makes sense. Um, but that is in a nutshell how to integrate DocuSign with monday.com very complicated. Like I said, if you need help with this or literally any other integrations, automations for any of your other business applications, please click the link below. We would be delighted to help. Thank you ever, ever so much for watching and hopefully see you soon. Goodbye.